Profesor Dr. Maskun SHLLM, <laughs> Dear Honorable Vice Dean for Planning Resources and Alumni Awards, Profesor Dr. Iin Karita Sakarina SHMA, Dear Honorable Keynote Speaker, Profesor Dr. Mm. Harlida Abdul Wahab, Dean School of Law, University Utara Malaysia, and Dear Honorable Participants of today's guest lecture. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Praise and gratitude be to God Almighty who has bestowed you upon us His mercy and blessings. Thus, we are able to gather here for the morning session of the guest lecture today in good health and happiness. We extend a warm welcome to the guest lecture entitled Geek Workers in Malaysia and the Legal Protection. We move to the first agenda, the welcoming remarks by the Vice Dean for Planning Resources and Alumni Awards, Professor Dr. Iin Karita SHMA. Thank you, MC. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Eh, good morning, selamat pagi, salam sejahtera bagi kita semua. Alhamdulillah atas nikmat sehat yang diberikan Allah Subhanahu wa taala pada pagi hari ini sehingga kita semua dapat berkumpul di tempat eh, di di sini walaupun lewat Zoom. First, I would like to menyapa dulu the honorable of our lovely guest speaker, Professor Halilida Abdul Wahab. She actually also Dean of School of Law Utara Malaysia, uh, University Utara Malaysia. Uh, salam, Prof. Terima kasih. Thank you very much uh, for being ready to be uh, our guest uh, speaker today in the general lecture. We are so happy to have you. And then, ya, yeah, terima kasih sudah meluangkan waktu. Uh, in your, I, I knew that uh, you are so busy, yeah, as a dean. Because, and then also the honorable of our vice academic student affairs, Professor Dr. Maskun, SHLM, LLM who are in UK now. <laughs> and then also the head of the constitution department who also uh, of the uh, law faculty, Hasanuddin U University, who also as uh, the host for our general lecture this morning. And then all the professor, lecturers and students, and then also all the participants who are attending this general lecture class this morning. Alhamdulillah, ya, karena uh, sekali lagi kita bisa berkumpul di uh, pada pagi hari ini bersama-sama untuk for the, uh, for uh, sharing session and then also for general lecture. So on behalf of our Dean, Professor Dr. Hamsa Halim, I would like to apologize Uh, for him not be able to attending this lecture and directly welcome our uh, lovely guest lecture, Professor Halida, this morning. Uh, since in the same time, like Professor Maskun, but while Professor Maskun is now in UK, our dean with, uh, uh, with some of our lecture is in Malaysia today for some works regarding to our cooperation with the University Kebangsaan Malaysia, and then also went to pick up uh, the 19 of our students who are staying and uh, studying in UKM right now. I, actually, I, I mentioned this since uh, Professor Harlida is here, and then so we hope that we can uh, have this uh, cooperation in the future or maybe in the next year to send our students in your faculty to uh, professor. That's why I mentioned about this. Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, we are so pleased and then exciting to hear the topic because this is a really interesting uh, topic. And of course, our students and, and of course, of our uh, all of us 
to will gain more knowledge and information, especially about workers in Malaysia and how is the legal protection suit works. Uh, just mention uh, last week, uh, I was uh, also have a duty to uh, went to Malaysia to take the students when there, and then at uh, two weeks ago and uh, with some of the lectures and on the occasion, uh, we have opportunity to to went uh, to visit the Indonesian embassy. Uh, while there, we had some discussion with the attaché of the education and culture of uh, Indonesia uh, of uh, Indonesia for Malaysia, and then some of our discussion uh, is about our migrant uh, workers, where is still uh, uh, rise um, so many problems. And then, but the one thing that's a uh, very interesting uh, issues that uh, the uh, Atasi told us is about the status of the children from women in the uh, from women of uh, from uh, migrant workers of Indonesia. So they gave birth, and well, uh, and then the children has no uh, citizens, uh, citizenship until now. So they're status that that we need special attention to take care. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, maybe I don't know if it's it's related about uh, this topic, but at least this is the same uh, topic that we will talk about the workers. And then, of course, I think I don't need to go further and long because we have the expert here, Prof. Harlida, and then uh, so Prof. Harlida will talk more and discuss more about that. So, and then, uh, uh, so since uh, Dean asked me to open this, so I actually, uh, I uh, uh, I officially uh, officially open this uh, general lecture uh, with the topic jigs workers in Malaysia and the legal protection. Uh, thank you very much once again, uh, Professor Harlida, for ready to share the knowledge with us. And then, yeah, happy seminar to all of us. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Prof. Uh, next, we will move on the main event of the guest lecture on the gig workers in Malaysia and the legal protection, which will be moderated by Dr. Triveni Widayanti, SHMH, an international law lecture at the Faculty of Law, Hasanuddin University. We would like to invite Dr. Triveni Widayanti, SHMH, to lead the guest lecture. Okay, thank you, Ms. Panti. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good uh, morning, everyone. Uh, today, we have a guest lecture from Professor Dr. Harlida Abdul Wahad, the Dean School of Law, University Utara, Malaysia. And also the topic will be uh, jigs workers in Malaysia and the legal protection. But before starting, let me read in briefly the biography of uh, Professor Dr. Harlida. So Professor Dr. Harlida Abdul Wahab is a dean at School of Law, College of Law, University Utara Malaysia. She obtained a bachelor degree at LLB Hans from International Islamic University Malaysia. LLM Business Law from Aberystwyth University, United Kingdom, and PhD Law from Islamic University, Malaysia. And her major area is Labor and Industrial Relation Law, and her other areas of interest are Environmental Law and Commercial Law. Good morning, Prof. Harlida. And so before starting, Prof., let me explain that today's guest lecture are divided into two sessions. And the first session is a lecture from Prof. Arida around 45 minutes. And then the second session is discussion session for the all participants. If they have uh, any questions and any uh, response about the gigs workers, especially in this topic, it's a very interesting topic. So uh, maybe, maybe it will take more than 50 minutes. And then, uh, without waiting any longer, please welcome Professor Dr. Harlida Abdul Wahab. Thank you, Prof. Harlida. Thank you, Prof. Harlida. Thank you, Prof. Harlida. Thank you, Prof. Harlida. Thank you, Prof. Harlida
Profesor Dr. Harwida Abdul Wahab, time is yours. Please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Salam uh, Salam Malaysia Madani. Salam dari UM. Uh, first of all, thank you very much to Dr. Uh, Tri Fanny, eh, the moderator for our uh, general lecture today. <coughs> Um, the Honourable uh, Vice Dean, I'm not so sure Vice Dean for what, Prof, Prof in Karita. Eh? Uh, thank you so much for the opening just now. Thank you, Professor. The Honourable uh, Alumni Dean, right? Uh, Vice Academic uh, Student Affairs, Prof Maskun. Thank you so much for having <coughs> for uh, giving me opportunity, yeah, uh, and of course generally to the Unhas, uh, who uh, which has uh, uh, invite me for this uh, general lecture. All uh, academic staff, uh, professors, associate professors, doctors, and students, and all participants. Again, uh, if if I may know, who, who are the participants for today? Is it just uh, academic lecturers and also uh, students? Uh, yes, Prof. Uh, the, all the participants yes, uh, are uh, students and academic and also a lecture from the uh, Faculty of Law, Hasanuddin University. So all are basically from Faculty of Law, right? Yes. Yeah, yes, it's right. And for the student, is it uh, as you are or mixed? Uh, mixed, prof. Mixed, okay, right. Sorry, I, I need to read it soon. Okay, <laughs> I think uh, without for, uh, further ado, I, I would like to start my uh, presentation. Um. I'll share the slide. Yeah. I hope I will not uh take uh, more than the required time. Uh can you see the slide? Yes, we can see it clearly. Okay, okay, thank you so much. All right. <laughs> Uh, first of all, uh, as I said, of course, thank you, thank you so much for having me for the for today, <coughs> for this morning. Uh, and actually, uh, Prof Maskun just mentioned to me, uh, um, uh, about the invitation to give a lecture, and the topic is up to me. So I should be very grateful because uh, I can choose the topic. But of course, uh, if you look at the title. Even though the title is more about Malaysia, but I think uh, the issue of gig workers is uh, among the um, issues that <clears throat> rising nowadays. Yeah, and it involves uh, not just uh, certain continent or certain countries, but uh, it is a worldwide issues, right? So uh, basically. Uh, why, why, why did I choose this uh, topic? Uh, because as I said, uh, this is, uh, if you can see here, I don't know how to, uh, all right. Because I, I am not so used to uh, use Zoom actually. Uh, okay, if, if there is any problem, please let me know, uh, Dr. Fanny, eh? Dr. Tri Fanny. Uh, okay, the, I, I just pick up a few uh, uh, newspaper cutting, yeah? And I think uh, young people nowadays, I'm not young anymore, but I, I, I can see from the faces uh, on the screen here, uh, you are quite young and actually our youth nowadays are very much familiar with uh, 
with online works. Okay. If we say it as online work, people, uh, I, I think people are familiar with online kind of job. But sometimes they may not know what is gig economy, what is gig uh, workers. Okay. So basically, I would say that gig workers is something that uh, to do with the uh, online or IT uh, tools. Um, so basically, uh, this is the online uh, the outline of our discussion. Uh, I hope I will stop at nine about nine fifteen or nine uh twenty or nine sorry nine no no it's nine forty already sorry ten ten thirty right. Okay, we start with the introduction and then uh, I discuss a little bit on the global scenario. Uh, and on the third uh, topic, we will jump into the legal landscape in Malaysia or specifically the issue of uh, gig workers in Malaysia. And then uh, the highlighted uh, cases, few cases. Uh, in Malaysia and also the conclusion or key takeaways from the discussion. So what is gig economy? So I'll try to, I hope uh, we can, <coughs> I can use the link for us to have a look at the uh, explanation of what is gig economy because gig workers is something that always uh, related to the gig economy but when we mentioned gig economy as i said uh, not everybody understand what is gig economy what is gig workers yeah because of the uh, modern term that uh, we are using i hope we can uh oh um Okay. Can 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 you okay, see okay, this? Fine. Oh, I'm sorry. That's it. That's it. All right. Just have a look for. For years, oh. the norm for a job has been permanent full. Sorry. Can can you see this slide? Uh, sorry. This the, uh, YouTube. Uh no no. Can Prof. I? Harlida. We yeah right. cannot. We can we can uh, we cannot I see. I think I need to share first. Um how 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 am I going to share this? Or can I can I post it to oh from from Askun, are you here? <laughs> if I can because I don't know how, how to share the uh YouTube online. Uh, probably you just place out the uh, uh the I, I, I need to to stop first. Uh, yeah, first, uh, the uh, Alip, can you can, can you help uh Prof. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, share. I think uh we can share. Um, I try to ah this one. I think this one. Um. All right. Now, can you see the slide of gig economy? Uh, I'm sorry, Prof. Harida. Cannot, still cannot. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let cannot me try it. again. The slide. Um, because I, I, I put a... Now... I'm screen sharing. Can you see something different from the no. slide? Not yet. No, prof, uh, it's still blank. All right. Uh, In blank that case, slide. I think I need, I, need, I need to stop the sharing first, I think. We can have a, a double sharing. So I try try again. Um, what about... No. No. 
Sip. No, still, still, yeah, still cannot. How about if you, uh, if you share with, uh, put it, uh, you, you share with our admin or IT, uh, to Mr. Alif, then, uh, share screen, uh, and later Mr. Alif will be share screen okay, your okay. Uh, PowerPoint. Okay. <clears throat> Just hold on for a while. Very sorry. It's okay. Uh, Palif, Sabe, tolong itu nanti ada file di uh, dimasukkan sama Prof di chat. Jadi nanti tolong dibantu share screen kan? Ya. Yeah. Hmm. Try to get the actually the the. the um the link oh mm. Uh, Prof Harida, uh, maybe uh, you can share can to put, in chat. Yeah, you can put in chat in the, column. Yeah, in the chat box, the, right? Yeah, and, chat box, yeah. Um, and then later, Mr. Alif will be share screen your file so or, I, our, 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 or Miss Wiranti I, will be help you. Okay, now I, I, I found the, the chat already. Right, I post it already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me try. Let me ask Miss Oriranti to share screen. No, no, Or Mr. Alif, Alif, Rabe, ada ke di ano? Yeah, Alif bisa bantu share screen. Oh yeah, okay. It's already. <coughs> For years, the norm for a job has been permanent full or part-time employment. But recently, more and more people are beginning to take on a variety of short-term jobs, also known as gigs. These include things like freelancing, temp jobs, jobs in the sharing economy, and more. All of these different jobs form something called the gig economy. The gig economy is beginning to take up a larger portion of the workforce and studies show no sign of it slowing down. This is partially due to the evolution of technology. Companies are now able to hire workers anywhere in the world who can then easily telecommute and work remotely for them. Mobile apps have allowed businesses like Uber and Airbnb to grow an enormous amount of contract workers. And social media has given people the ability to market themselves and sell their products and services at a much cheaper cost than traditional advertising. It's hard to say exactly how the rise of the gig economy will affect and change the future of the job market, but we do know that both companies and workers will need to continue to adapt to it. Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. All right. So now, uh, do you understand what is gig workers, especially of, of course for for our students? Yeah. Um. All right. Because at the end of this session, uh, we can do a quiz, huh? Uh, Ibu, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ibu Prof, Ibu Vice Dean, <laughs> we can do uh assessment quiz to the students. I hope. <laughs> All right. Um. Now we 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 continue. I hope you can still hear my voice. Right. Okay. I hope you can get some points from the explanation what is gig economy, right? Which basically, to conclude uh, the meaning of gig economy, I would say that there is a changes in the landscape of 
um, labor market, right? Because of the technology, the uh, there is the the demand for the traditional work is uh, decreasing, but there is a new form of uh, work or new um, new tools of working by the employee is taking place. And uh, if you can, uh, if you realize one of the, uh, from the YouTube just now, it says that uh, you, even though the situation it is now is a little bit different, yeah, there, there are changes in the landscape of the labor workers or labor market, but the companies still need workers. And of course, we still need uh, some business or work in order for us to um, incur, uh, to, 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 to make uh, our life, right? And with the, with the changes of the landscape of the labor, company and workers, even though they still need each other, but the changes make them to, they need to adapt with the situations. They need to adapt with the, uh, how the law should be. So, because gig workers is something relating to the economy, but from the legal perspective, of course, there is a something that related to it. What what are the how, how does gig economy affect the uh, the legal uh, perspective? So basically, uh, as an introduction, gig economy. Uh, if you can see the. Uh, the one that I highlight here is the economic system that involves labor market where people are engaged in a short term contracts. If you can still remember from the uh, from the YouTube just now, from the video just now, it says about short term contract, uh, part time workers, uh, what else? Um, temp work or temporary work. So those are the characteristics of gig economy, right? It involves a short-term contract, or we call it as freelance work, as opposed to permanent jobs. So what, since uh, there is no, uh, at, at, at this point of time, since there is no um, proper definition or exact definition of gig workers, but it says that gig workers is something that different from permanent job or permanent workers. So what are the characteristics of permanent job or permanent workers? So permanent job here is, actually there are many characteristics of permanent job. Sometimes um, we can say it as uh, nine to five, yeah, eight to five work, that is uh, traditional work where we bear with the, we, we have to bear with the time. We have to give the full of our uh, work to be with the employer within a specified time. So permanent job is something that relates to the time. As I said, it could be 9 to 5 or 8 to 5 where uh, we are tied by the time. Permanent job also is based on contract. Basically, uh, I, I believe that all the lecturers, yeah, all the docent here, you have a contract. You have a written contract. <clears throat> so permanent job is based on the, uh, you, you have a, a special contract between the employee or worker and the employer or the company and 
because of that, because of the contract that bind the parties, the controlling power is belong to the employer. What does it mean by controlling power? The employer has a right to determine what you need to do when you have to do things how you need to do certain things yeah and 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 in fact if you fail to um to fulfill or to obey with the uh with the instruction of the employer at certain point of time employer can terminate you so controlling power in the sense that they can control how the job is done and at the same time they can control uh, uh, in terms of uh, termination as well if you do not uh, do as what we expect you to do we we, we can uh, terminate you we can uh, sack you from the company for example so th those are uh, among the um, characteristics of the permanent job and of course as a uh, in in permanent job there is a special relationship between employer and employee especially there are a specific legislation or specific uh, sections or law that governs uh, both parties and of course with this uh, law that um uh, giving uh, that have a protection, yeah, uh, giving benefits to the employee, uh, determine the relationship of employee-employee. So there are, at the same time, where the law gives protection to the employee or to the workers. Why the law gives protection to the workers when there is a permanent job? Because of the different level of uh, uh, bargaining power yeah because the bargaining power between employer and employee is different of course employee employer they can request you many things even they can determine uh, how much would they pay to the worker uh what time you should come to to the office uh what are the things what are the job specification for the employee so uh, the government or the law interfere because to uh, it is to give justice basically to the employee or to the workers. Okay, where at the same time from this law, the employee or the workers will get some protections from being uh, exploited by the employer. So now we come to the gig workers, a uh, person who does temporary or freelance work, especially an independent contractor engaged on an informal or on-demand basis. Why informal? Sometimes they call it as uh, informal sector because gig workers, they are not protected uh, by the law generally. Yeah, They are temporary workers, they are freelance they are independent. They they are boss on their own. Yeah. Uh, and the sector that they work is called as informal sector. So what are the examples? Anyone can mention it? What are the examples of uh, gig workers? or gig economy because it seems like uh, i'm the only one who talks so if 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 i can get a response from some of you uh, maybe the all uh, the participants can yeah. you give an example uh, about the gig workers uh, maybe you can yang share lainnya, mahasiswa. Indonesia. Okay. yeah okay Oke okay, Prof, uh, buat mahasiswa mungkin ada yang tahu contohnya uh, pegaw, apa, pekerja gig workers, gig, pekerja gig itu seperti apa contohnya? Ada yang tahu? 
You can, kalau you can kalau, your kalau tidak diberi examplenya mungkin tidak faham. Betul, ya betul betul Prof. Jadi uh, uh, peserta yang lain ada yang tahu. Mungkin kalau saya kasih bayangan seperti ini mereka agak paham. Ah ya. ada yang jawab Prof. Uber ya. driver. In Indonesia like Grab driver okay. or Gojek driver. So Uber okay, driver, yeah. okay. What else? Do you have in Indonesia? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you Ahmad uh, Ahmad Afif. And also so, this is Prof Wilhelm Wilhelmina, designer freelancer. Yeah, Wilhelmina uh, mentioned designer freelance freelancer. Yeah. Who else would like to take part? Yang lainnya ada masukan? Writing, programming, where you do it on your own as a freelance, right? Yeah. So I think, uh, I hope all of you uh, understand what is uh, gig workers or gig economy yeah? uh, from the examples that you have given. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, congratulations for all the answers given. Right. So um, I think, uh, uh, Prof. Karita, yeah. Uh, I think nowadays youth are more interested in having this kind of job, right? Probably some some of you, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we we look at the example here. Uh, I I just put the uh, pictures, yeah. Gojek, uh, in Indonesia, Uber, as uh, one of your friend mentioned just now. Here is with the pink color. Here is uh, in Malaysia we have food panda. I always order almost every day. I order food panda. Yeah, uh, Grab. <coughs> we have a uh, uh, like Uber as well. Uh, Grab car, Grab food. Yeah, so we have different kind of platform, uh, for the gig workers. Yeah, <coughs> so these are among the examples. And of course, nowadays, uh, we just, um, our convocation just last, uh, last week. So, uh, during the convocation, which is very different from my day, yeah, from our day before, um, I just, uh, <clears throat> to share with you, before this, we have, a um, we call it, uh, what what will you call it? Uh, we have a photo photographer, yeah, photographer for the photo shoot, yeah. We just have it for uh for the wedding, for the purpose of wedding uh ceremony. But nowadays they have a photo shoot photographer, freelance photographer for the convocation. So it means that. The um uh apa itu kita kita, kita sebutnya sebagai um the work or the the photographer is not just have a very limited uh work to do. They expand their work not just for wedding purpose, but they can do it for any other ceremony, any other event. Yeah, so that is why sometimes people would say, uh, kerja gig ini, yeah, gig work is more pot have more potential. Uh, can get more income. Yeah, uh, what else? What are other benefits? Uh, you think you you can think first, and then uh, probably we can discuss uh, later. Right, so these are among the facts and figure. The number of gig workers is growing worldwide. It is not just in Malaysia, uh, even though my my title is more on sharing uh, on Malaysia, but it is a <coughs> the worldwide fact, yeah. Uh, which I believe it also happened in Indonesia. Uh, in the US, the number is expected to rise by more than thirty million, <coughs> and by twenty twenty five. They project. They projected that it will rise by half of the uh, people. And uh, 
in the case of Malaysia, gig workers represent a significant portion of the labour market. It comprises of 1.6 million uh, people. And from this number, actually from the study done, around 19% of gig workers in Malaysia plan to make it their career for the long term. So, why why I why did I like I highlight this? Because if you can see, uh, if you can still remember from my explanation previously in the earlier part, and from the uh, video just now, they mentioned that gig workers gig economy is something to do with the temp work or temporary work, but probably. In a long run, in a future, in a, in a very near near future, yeah. The definition of a short term work is no more relevant because higher number of workers, higher number of youth nowadays plan or potentially make gig work as a long-term career. It's no more uh, short-term probably, right? And of course, as I said, youth are the largest work workforce with nearly 80% of gig workers are in the age of between 25 to 34 age group. So uh, as I said, why as I questioned in the earlier of the lecture, why well, this topic is relevant? Because even though it is called as gig economy, it has, it is very relevant to the legal aspect. The rise of gig work impacts traditional employment structure, which means that the traditional employment could be keep decreasing as compared to the modern type of uh, gig work, right? Uh, that is why one of the uh, amendment to the, I jump to the amendment actually, uh, amendment of the Malaysian law, which I could, I um, of course, uh, you can share later about the Indonesia, yeah? but one of the amendment of the uh, Employment Act in Malaysia is regarding a uh, flexible work arrangement. Why? Because the traditional work is keep changing. Yeah. Uh, what is flexible work arrangement? People nowadays are not looking at nine to five or eight to five work anymore. They are working, they are looking for flexible work, flexible time. Yeah. So it gives the impact to the traditional work. Second, from the legal perspective, of course, it raises the questions about rights. If you are a temporary workers, how are you going to ensure about the protection of law to your rights? Rights of uh, because that's why I mentioned I I I give you the. Uh, I showed you the slide about the permanent job, right? Because the permanent job, the workers who are working under the traditional work or permanent job, they are basically protected under the law, protected under the act, under the legislation of the country. But when we talk about gig workers or part-time work, uh, temporary work, of course, it raises the question of what are the rights that employee get? What are the rights of gig workers, which this should be looked uh, into by the, of course, by the policymaker or by the, by the government. And the third one is the status of gig workers. What are the status? Can can we if, if you are the gig workers because 
uh, because uh, honorable professors, yeah, uh, all the doctors, lecturers here, uh, I think your student also uh, do part-time job. They are also experienced. I believe some of you are experiencing doing gig work, right? So what is actually your status? What is the status of gig workers? Are they employee or are they independent contractor? There are still debate about this, especially because, uh, especially for the country, which has no, uh, which is still indecisive regarding the status of gig workers. The first one, gig workers lack of traditional employment benefits, as I said, I mentioned already, and essential social protections. What are the essential social protections in terms of if, uh, if uh, let's say, because we know like uh, Gojek, yeah, uh, use motorcycle and among the accident that always happen uh, is involving uh, motor or the rider of the Gojek or in, in, in Malaysia, uh, food panda or grab food. Okay. So uh, if you are the uh, permanent workers, your employer is responsible or is under the duty to um, to contribute to the fund of social protection in terms of uh, giving protection in terms of the insurance. If there is an accident, then you'll be protected. Uh, employee, that kind of employee, if there is anything happened to him, he can if he is warded, then uh, employee will pay for the uh, hospitalization, will pay for the medical fees, right? But this is not the case for gig workers. And of course, there are pros and cons. There are some benefits. There are also disadvantages of uh, gig workers. So that is why, and, and, and I think one of the things that I need also to mention here is because the number of gig workers is keep increasing. And this is the issue of worldwide. It is not an uh, uh, issue of certain countries only, right? So what are the pros and cons of the gig workers or gig work? Like benefits, I mentioned already, you can see already from, from my explanation just now, uh, it may, some people say, um, gig work provide less benefit as compared to the permanent workers or traditional work. However, some people would say, some gig workers might say, why, why do you say we have a lack benefits? Because we are most flexible. If I want to wake up at 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock in the afternoon, I can plan my I can plan my time. But you go to work, you 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 are bound by the uh, employer. Yeah, because you have to come to work earlier because of the machet. Right. If you wake up late, machet, you come to work late. And you are subject to uh, misconduct, from, uh, for example. Uh, you are subject to... What is the DR? Paragraph? Any, anything? <clears throat> okay, so there are pros and cons in terms of flexibility. Some people might say uh, uh, geek Gig work is more, uh, give more benefit because I can plan my time. I can do my own work, right? I have a flexibility, right? Uh, in terms of financial instability, because some people will say there is no pension. Uh, there is no gratuity by the employer. Uh, no financial uh, 
aid or assistance by the employer to the employee. But some of gig worker would say, how come you say financial instability? Because uh, during our time, uh, during uh, because we are still young, we have a larger income as compared to our friends or probably our parents who are working uh, at uh, tradition, doing traditional work. Right. So, of course, it, it has pros and cons as a gig worker. Uh, in terms of opportunity for career growth, yeah. Uh, but some some gig workers would say, "Who oh, cares?" Because as as long as I can get more income in a, in a day, in a week, or in a month, uh, who cares about the career growth? And and in fact, if I become a photographer, I can start with the. <clears throat> uh, I might not be uh excel yet. No, not I may not have skill yet, so I can charge lesser. But of course, I can gain more skills, more from from the experience. Then it is part of career growth, also because uh when I start, I can charge for example two hundred ringgit only or one hundred ringgit, but after two years, three years. I can put more demand. I can get more. And that is considered as my career growth from my perspective, right? So in terms of low bargaining powers, because you are your own boss and lack of legal protection. But some people would say, I don't care about the legal protection because as far as I satisfy with my, with my job. So there are pros and cons. Yeah, but again, in terms of the legal protection, I think there is still a uh, necessary to have uh, some legal protection to the gig workers. So now I come to the current legal landscape in Malaysia. Uh, gig workers in Malaysia, as I mentioned just now, it involves uh, there are about one point six million. Of course, Malaysia is not big like uh, Indonesia. Uh, but still, the number is considered as quite big so that uh, currently, uh, Malaysia has no special legislation covering the protection of gig workers. However, in terms of the development, the current development is that the government is about to introduce the law for the gig workers. And other than the law, uh, the government also uh, introduced, has introduced some initiatives for the gig workers. Now we come to the law. So in terms of the law, uh, the Employment Amendment Act, they, they, uh, we had the amendment to the Employment Act, 1955. Yep. Yeah. Where... Uh, the Employment Amendment Act brought changes to gig workers status with a new section has been added. So to cater the issue of gig workers, uh, the government has made the amendment to the the parliament has made amendment to the act where one section has been added. Yeah, actually it's not one, few few sections. Yeah. One that I mentioned to you just now is about the flexible work arrangement. And another thing is uh, about the gig workers who can now rely on the updated uh, Employment Act where the, what are the changes? What are the uh, amendment made? According to the Employment Amendment Act 2023, the definition of employee, because before this definition of employee there are two types of definition. One is according to the type of job and another one is according to the uh, range of range of the salary wages. If you earn 4,000 and below, you are subject to the Employment Act. But nowadays, the Employment Act 
has made some changes where they put employee as even though there is no contract, okay, let's say there's no contract because permanent workers as compared to the part-time workers, they need to have a contract of employment. So generally, when we call it as contract, we need to make it in writing. The contract should be made in writing. But with this amendment, even though there is no written contract between employer and employee, the, this uh, amendment still considered someone to be the employee if he fulfills this uh, criteria. The first one is the manner of work is subject to the control or direction of another person. Let's say if I work with, uh, let's say with R, I work with R company, I have no uh, employment contract. I have no contract at all in writing. So based on this provision, it says that if the manner of work is subject to the control of the direction of another person, if our company can control the direction of my job, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this tomorrow. If you do not do it, we can terminate you. So that is subject to the control. Then it is considered as employee or worker. The hours of work are subject to the control or direction. This is also, as I said, because traditional work is based on the hours of work, right? So if you are subject to the hours of work of another person, then you are, uh, in terms of the relation, you are subject to the employer. Next one, they are provided with the tools, materials, or equipment by another person to execute work. Okay, if you want to do work, your employer provide you with the tools. For example, you are cameraman, you are photographer. Yeah, you are photographer. The camera are provided, and all the tools are provided by the employer. Then you are considered as employee. But if you do work, all the tools, all, all the camera, all the, what else, the zoom uh, camera or anything that related to the work of photographer are uh, on your own, you are not considered as employee because it is based on the equipment or tools provided. The next one is the work constitutes an integral part of another person's business. If you are the photographer and you work with the let's say, with the photograph company, yeah, uh, that could be part of your work or your job with the employer. Their work is performed solely for the benefit of another person. You do the work for employer. It's not doing job for yourself. So that is different from gig workers, right? And where payment is made to them in return for work done by them at regular intervals. As a gig workers, you do your job and you get your own. But you do your job, but some part of it, employer give it to you and some part they take it, then it may be considered as that particular gig worker can be uh, assumed or presumed to be uh, employee, right? <clears throat> okay, that is under the law, uh, under the Employment Act in terms of the, um, in terms of the status of employee. In terms of social protection, uh, in Malaysia, we have a Self-Employment Social Security Act. So before this, Social Security Act is just applicable to the permanent workers. But with the um, 
development of uh, gig workers, gig work, and also uh, self-employed persons. Uh, the government has uh, introduced Self-Employment Social Security Act, where this scheme um, is uh, on voluntary basis, but at least the gig worker can contribute some of his income through this uh, law, yeah, where if anything happened to him, yeah, let's say, as I have mentioned before, uh, let's say uh, he got accident or he cannot work, then with this uh, voluntary scheme where he contribute to the uh, insurance scheme, then he will be protected under this uh, scheme of uh, retirement. Yeah? Uh, and secondly, self-employment injuries also is protected uh, in terms of occupational disease, disablement, and other medical matters. And other than that, uh, occupation, uh, compulsory occupational license, it means that if you want to be, let's say, gig uh, uh, grab driver, you need to have license. Uh, if there is an uh, accident, you need to have a accident insurance. This is some other parts of the protection for the, uh, especially for the uh, gig uh, work in terms of the uh, grab driver. So other than that, uh, secondly, the government initiatives uh, where recently Malaysia have uh, established or set up the gig commission, yeah. Uh, commission here means the, the uh, independent uh, independent body uh, in the name of Malaysian Gig Economy Commission, uh, which is formed to support the ecosystem of gig economy, specifically to safeguard the welfare and rights of gig workers by developing and enforcing regulations. And this commission is responsible in ensuring fair compensation and legal recognition, as well as addressing issues faced by gig workers. And it is expect, expected to provide a formal channel to address prevalent issues in the gig economy, such as grievances related to platform man, manipulation, wage determination, and other related concerns. So it means that other than the law, the government also uh, has taken initiative to set up uh, a, a commission, yeah, a, a independent body to look into the issue of uh, gig worker or gig economy. And other than that, there is also additional programs where uh, in the second uh, second column. In the budget 2024, the government continues the career building program to incentivize and train gig workers involved in the program. So the government uh, create uh, a program, a career building program to the gig workers. And at the same time, the government also introduced the EPF's uh, I Saraan program. What is I Saraan program? I Saraan program actually is a voluntary contribution initiative that offers opportunity for self-employed individuals without fixed income to obtain government incentives for retirement purpose. So it means that through I Saraan, this uh, gig work gig workers because they have no fixed income, they they are entitled to get a uh, government's uh, incentive up to 500 ringgit per year to be contributed in the I Saraan program for the purpose of retirement. So these are the among the cases to highlight. I think I, I will not uh, discuss this case. This case, uh, this case, this case is a very uh, long time ago yeah but uh, why i put this case because this is a case where the federal court laid down 
the essential test to determine the status of employee. Now we look at the recent uh, case on Lo Wet Ching, yeah, because uh, this case is about the status of Grab Cup and uh, Grab car driver, which uh, the court uh, or Malaysia considered this as a landmark ruling, landmark case for a uh, gig work driver, okay, for gig workers. So in this case, the High Court uh, affirmed the decision of Industrial Court where the judge agreed that e-hailing drivers or gig work, yeah, gig workers as a e-hailing drivers are not employees but considered as independent third-party contractors. So what is the connection with the industrial court in Malaysia? Because this driver, he brought the case to the industrial court to claim his right, uh, sorry, to claim her right because she had been dismissed from the company. So she tried to uh, argue that by way of dismissal, by the company, it means that the company has a control on her. When the company has a control, it means that the company is the employer, right? But when the case is, but the industrial court dismissed the case uh, because lack of other characteristics of uh, status of employee and by that, uh, the industrial court dismissed the submission because industrial court is the, the jurisdiction of the industrial court is just to uh, hear the case of employer and employee. If the status is not employer-employee, industrial court has no jurisdiction to hear the case. So she did not satisfy. She brought the case, uh, the appeal to the High Court, but still High Court also uh, found the same, yeah, still uh equal with the with the judge uh industrial court where the high court declined and claimed that the grab car driver is not the uh, the employee yeah okay, I'm sorry, so, Prof, five yeah. minutes more yeah five minutes yeah five minutes more okay yeah. so in other words means that uh, the grab car the grab driver in malaysia is not considered as employee right so this is, I, I think I can skip this one because this is the jurisdiction of other uh, countries. But to make it uh, very short, in the UK, it is considered as workers. Uh, if, if there is a more discussion, I will mention it uh, later. Uh, UK does not consider it as employee. They, they mention it that perhaps uh, Uber workers, uh, Uber driver is uh, considered as classified as workers, yeah, instead of independent contractors. And for the Australia, uh, they introduced new law for gig workers, yeah, to give special protection for them. Uh, for California, they have similar. They have a model for gig workers protection. Yeah, and this is also other jurisdiction. Germany, Netherlands, the Spain, Switzerland, and Uruguay, they classify gig workers as employees where the level are similar to traditional employees. For New Zealand, they rule that employer, I, I think New Zealand is about similar with uh, Malaysia, where 
Uber driver is a self-employed workers. Uh, for the Philippines, they have a special uh, protection for the gig workers. They have a special law for the gig workers as well. So basically, I would say that different countries have a different legal status of gig workers. So they may have a different uh, legal protections. So these are the area of lacking of protection. Actually, we, we have discussed uh, before, I, I have mentioned it before, in terms of wages and benefits, social protection, job security and stability, safety and health uh, protection. So these are... Two minutes, yeah, for me to to give a proposed solution. So, uh, for Malaysia, we uh, the government have the idea of um having a legislation, uh, special legislation. They are introducing, or we are introducing a new bill end of this year with a new regulatory framework for the sector. I mean the the gig economy sector. And to cover the elements, uh, including worker safety and protection, will involve both uh, EPF <coughs> and PERKESO. I, I will explain it later. The coverage of 24-hour protection and coverage of medical care as well. And this is also other suggestions to establish a grievance mechanism to define the structure and functions of the commission, assess financial implications, determine which it's ensuring occupational safety and health to provide an integrated database for the registration of gig workers and probably to have a gig worker unions to help but advocate uh, for their rights. And as a conclusion, the fact is that gig workers growth, the legal challenges and the pressing need for more robust uh, protections and for a call to action, the importance of innovative legal framework and collective solutions that balance uh, flexibility and fair treatment to the gig, work, uh, gig workers. And for the future takeaways or future outlook, how automation, policy changes, and global developments might shape the future of gig workers, some, some other things that we may uh, think about. Yeah. So with that, uh, I end my lecture and presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Prof, uh, for all the knowledge about the gig workers and the gig economy, especially uh, for all our, uh, our, for all our students. So let me next to uh, continue with the next session. Uh, apa ada yang mau bertanya? I'm sorry, uh, Prof. I'm using Bahasa because maybe uh, uh, maybe it's easier for the students if they asking questions with Bahasa. Let me uh, deliver uh, in English later. Mahasiswa uh, yang ada di dalam ruangan, mahasiswa, apakah mau bertanya terkait dengan di quarters? Uh, before uh, I open the uh, the session, let me ask you prof uh, would you uh, answer the questions directly or maybe later after three or four questions from the students no no problem okay thank you prof uh, mahasiswa ada yang mau bertanya tidak apa-apa menggunakan bahasa oke okay, anisa boleh uh, boleh aja ataupun oh, yeah. kalau uh, even if there is no question you can you can just uh, share the situation probably in Indonesia as well. Okay, 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 Prof. Uh, Anissa Salsabila bisa buka kameranya, silahkan bertanya langsung ke Prof, karena Prof uh, tidak masalah jika menggunakan bahasa, Prof juga mengerti. Silahkan, Anissa Salsabila. Uh, terima kasih, Bu. Tapi boleh saya minta izin untuk tidak on cam? Karena... Ya, yeah, oke, okay. oke, okay, dimengerti. Ya, yeah, silahkan. Uh, terima kasih. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity, Prof. Uh, first of all, I would like to apologize if maybe my English is still a bit messy. So, uh, my name is Anissa Dulcebila from Legal Study Program, Batch 2023. So, um, one thing that comes to my mind, Prof, about 
this topic is that uh, with respect, I would like to know about your opinion. Can this gig work be made more sustainable as a long-term career choices for us in the future? And do you think that there will be some challenges in the future if it turns out that this career prospect can become a long-term career choices uh, for the future generation? As we know that uh, this gig work certainly has a draws back such as because of its uh, flexibility, the income can be a bit uncertain sometimes, Prof. Maybe that's all from me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarasabila. Please, Prof. Okay. Three, uh, three Penny. So uh, I can straight away answer, yeah? Yeah. Right? Okay, yeah, yeah, thank yeah, you, you so can much answer. for... I forgot already your name. <laughs> uh, Sasabila, Pro. Sasabila, okay. Okay, regarding, I, I, I think you have two questions just now, right? Okay, the first one is regarding the, uh, whether gig work can be a long-term career in the future. Yeah. I think, uh, okay, from my opinion, with the changes of the landscape of uh, labor market nowadays and with the with the advancement of the uh, technology yeah uh, with the uh, many aspects of changes with the ai for example and ma many other things uh, of course there will be the, 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 the landscape of our labor market will be different from the traditional one. Therefore, uh, with the prevalence of the ataupun saya katakan, uh, it becomes more pop popular nowadays, gig work, right? Especially for the youth generation. Yeah? Uh, for the younger generation, this gig work, I assume, will be or most probably can be a long-term career in the future. And because of that, there is a need to have a proper legislation, proper law to give protection to this group of people. Because the government, uh, and in fact, from the because sometimes uh, we we take action based on the uh, world or global development, right? Based on the global development, the number is not decreasing. The number for nowadays keep increasing as I've mentioned in, in the facts and figure uh, before because uh, in US alone now it is one third of the people involved into uh, gig work but they assume by 2025 it will be half of the uh, people so it means that the trend is keep increasing so in terms of the career it may be considered or change to be a long-term career, but at the same time, that is why we need to have a proper protection to the to this group of workers, right? So that is my answer for number one. For number two, uh, in terms of the prospect, how would... Uh, I, I think uh, it is more on how how do we see the gig work can affect the the future uh, labor market? Yes, of course, because uh, it seems like I I think okay from my study, especially in um, from from my um, research, yeah. Because one one of uh, I have two two study I'm doing two two research on um one is about flexible work arrangement 
and another in Malaysia and another thing is about platform work. Platform work is like gig work as well. So based on our finding, yeah, of course my finding is based on Malaysia, but I think uh, it, it could also be applicable in Indonesia. Yeah. Um, from the study on flexible work arrangement, when we did a survey to the workers, most of them prefer flexi time or flexible work. Right? So flexible work can be you work with the company, but they are given flexi time, flexible time. But some of them would prefer not to work with anyone because we can have our own time. We can have our own flexibility. And if that is happening with a large number of workers prefer to be uh, um, that kind of work, of course, it may affect the economy of the country because it could be, especially the, the, the younger generation, they may not prefer to work with the employer because of no flexible, no flexibility. Even nowadays, most of uh, younger generation prefer to, because in Malaysia, uh, I forget the number, but but from the from the numbers from the study, uh, among the numbers of gig workers, if I'm not mistaken, about 70 to 80 percent, yeah, I, I think I, may, I mentioned this now, about 80 percent of them would like or prefer gig work to be their long-term job. When they prefer it to be long-term job, as I said, of course it will affect some industries because industries, employer need, need you to work with them. But if you, the younger generation, prefer to have your own job, work on your own, being independent from the employer, then of course it will affect the country. Yeah? So I think that that's the 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 answer or respond uh, to these questions. Okay, uh, thank you, Prof, for the answer. Uh, mahasiswa yang lain, apakah masih ada yang ingin bertanya? Bagus sekali soalannya, ya. <laughs> ya, betul betul, Prof. Ini sangat uh, sesuatu yang menarik dan ternyata there is a big difference between Indonesia and Malaysia, especially in uh, legislation in Malaysia even they don't have a uh, specific legislation covering about the gigs uh, workers but uh, there is still self employment social security act uh, that will be uh, recover recover about and and give protect uh, about the medical matters and in Indonesia we still don't have uh, something like that so it became a big problem in Indonesia uh, terutama banyak yang gojek uh, driver and grab driver they demand about the medical matters jadi uh, health assurance in Indonesia we call BPJS uh, health insurance for uh, the the self employment like that yeah, we call uh, BPJS so uh, another participant uh, maybe Bu Eka will give uh, a question for Prof. Harida Yes. Thank you, uh, Ibu Feni. Prof, sorry. Um, yeah, thank you, Prof. Prof, I have uh, one question regarding for our material. Uh, I continue from uh, Miss uh, Feni talk about. My question is, how can the G platforms ensure fair treatment and the benefits for their workers? Because uh, as we know, for uh, G workers, they become a part-time uh, workers. Yes, Prof. And then 
the other one become the permanent worker. So what is the fair treatment and benefits for the for the uh, workers? For, yeah, especially for G workers. Thank you. Uh, terima kasih, uh, Ibu Ika. Um, okay. Um, how how should I start? Okay. Actually, gig gig worker initially, right? Initially, gig worker we consider or globally. Uh, or previously, we consider gig worker as independent contractor or freelance. So, when we say freelance or um, independent contractor, independent worker, there is no protection at all. Right. But of course, from the side of the uh, gig worker, he might have contract with individual who assign him. For example, if I'm the photographer, yeah, uh, I just do a freelance job. Of course, I have no, uh, I'm not protected by any law. I mean, the, 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 the law by the government, no, no law at all protect me. But the protection could be when I give my service to Ibu Ika, contohnya, right? So, my protection could be, I would say, you have to pay me. So, that, that's only on uh, on contract basis. That's only on contract basis, right? Okay, that is the previous one. But when the number of gig workers keep increasing worldwide, the government feels that we need to do something. Right, because if we do not take actions, if we do not take initiative to give protection to them, we might lose something. Because because why? Because gig workers, there are two time, uh, two types of gig workers. One is, I'm I I'll be the boss for me, because I'm the one who offer service right so i can i can uh, determine when i want to work when i want to wake up if this service a come i want to refuse i want to choose b for example or whatever but another one is gig workers who is under the platform like uber or gojek they are gig work, they're doing gig work based on certain platform. This is the issue of this gig work because this, the one who own the platform, sometimes they might uh, exploit or, or abuse or use their uh, status to exploit gig workers and the market is very big like gojek right the market is very big like in malaysia grab the market is very big so if we go for the individual workers the market might not affect it so much but when it is based on platform work the market is very big when the market is big, sometimes the, the, the government feels that or found out some platform provider, the service provider, might uh, exploit the, the uh, employee, I mean the, the gig workers. So that is why they feel that we need to have certain law to give protection to the gig workers. Okay. Based back to the question on how, how to ensure or what, what are the benefits and protection, uh, I cannot remember, uh, but, but basically, if I'm not mistaken, there are two or three models worldwide. 
they use different model based on different country. I'm not so sure about Indonesia, but uh, the the model is some countries, some countries, the one that I mentioned, uh, I think, uh, let me check. Uh, like, um, Australia, Germany, yeah, uh, European, European countries, they, they give this, they acknowledge the status of gig worker as employee. So, so, uh, in other words, it means that some country, when they acknowledge the status of gig worker as employee, it means that they just use the same legislation. They use the same law because they uh, the status of gig workers is same as other workers, same as traditional workers. So they use similar law. But some countries, they, uh, they classify gig workers as independent contractor. For example, in the case of the, the case that uh, that happened in Malaysia before, the one that I shared with you, and in fact, some other countries also, they consider gig workers not employee. So when not employee, you are not protected at all. Okay, but some countries they said that gig workers is neither uh neither employee nor independent contractor but they create another model so they have different model one independent contractor one is em yes we consider them as employee and the third one the third one we categorize uh get worker as that gender <laughs> that gender <laughs> That we give that status, like uh, they have a special status. That is what is happening in UK. Yeah, they consider uh, you are workers. You are not employee, so they have a different classifications. Employee is something else. Uh, independent contractor is something else. Workers is something else. So, okay, back to the uh, what is it? Uh, benefit and and protection benefit and protection is based on the depending on the status if if the country give uh does not acknowledge gig, gig worker as the employee no protection but in the case of malaysia even though there is no special protection given but the government tried to create initiative to give a uh, social protection but on voluntary basis, there is no, um, it means that if you are, if you choose to, uh, choose to contribute to the uh, scheme, you are protected. If not, you are not protected because you are not governed by the law. So we cannot impose mandatory protection to you. But if you choose to to be protected, you have to contribute to the uh, self employment scheme just now. However, by end of this year, inshallah, uh, the government is now in the process of uh, legislate a uh, new law, new law for. Uh, special for the special protection of the gig workers, right? <clears throat> Am I yes. answering the question? Yes, 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 Professor. Thank you so much for your uh, answer, Professor. Uh, thank you, Prof, for your answer. Uh, the other <laughs> participant, the uh, if still there is questions. This is the last question for the other participant or the last 
response you can give your response about the difference between uh, how we say uh, the difference between gig workers in Indonesia and in Malaysia because uh, like I said before that there is a big difference so I still give the opportunity for the other participants uh, if you have your response or your uh, questions regarding do, do the have, gig workers sorry okay. Putri, do you have yeah. fine, uh, I mean Indonesia have a special law now if we talk about the special law uh, regarding the gig workers we still don't have any special uh, special law uh, covering or protect uh, protecting the gig workers and it still became a big problem in Indonesia because uh, a lot of uh, gig workers demanding especially in medical matters or assurance health assurance so uh, uh, like I said before prof that there is difference between the Indonesia and Malaysia well uh, in Malaysia even though they don't have a uh, uh, still don't have specific legislation, but they have a self-employment social security, yeah. mm -hmm. and it still pro and it protect the gig workers. In Indonesia, we still don't have both of that uh, legislation. Mm -hmm. We don't have the uh, act regarding a uh, specific uh, legislation regarding the gig workers, and also we don't have the uh, the reg legislation regarding the especially medical matters. Uh, uh, about the gig workers, uh, how about their uh, health assurance? How about their if they have a uh, disease? So it's still a problem until now in Indonesia. So uh, it's a really interesting topic in Indonesia because is gig workers is uh, still uh, something maybe it's already long uh, we have a gig workers, but in Indonesia. Only a few people know about uh, gig workers. They only know, uh, they don't know that, that gig workers is object drivers, and, uh, grab drivers. They only know it's a uh, freelance or maybe it's an uh, independent uh, contractor or maybe uh, uh, it's not an employee like the in permanent job. Maybe like that. Yeah. Uh, mahasiswa yang lain, apa ada yang mau bertanya? Uh, if not, maybe let me wrap it up a little bit, Prof. Uh, yeah. So, uh, like I said before, uh, the big workers is something very interesting topic in uh, in uh, faculty of law because it's maybe it's not new, but only a few people knowing about the big workers itself. That how about big workers relate to the gig economy and how about the Big economy connected between the technology, the demand of the technology and the social and the way of life in, uh, especially in youth people right now, uh, and also the, uh, regarding the gig workers, especially uh, in Malaysia, although they don't have a specific legislation, they still have another legislation that will protect the gig workers' rights. And uh, other uh, and medical, especially in medical matters in Indonesia, we don't have like that until now, and it still became a hot topic uh, in Indonesia. So uh, maybe that's all I can uh, give wrap, wrap up uh, for this uh, uh, gig workers in Malaysia and the legal protection. Thank you so much for this uh, knowledge. You share to us, uh, Prof. Harida, thank you so much for this opportunity. It's a really interesting uh, topic and it really uh, become a uh, knowledge for all of us, especially for the uh, member of the Faculty of Law Hasan University. So with this uh, last session, I return the event to the MC, Ms. Wiranti. I give the event to you. Thank you, Prof. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Oke, okay, thank you. Uh, we express our gratitude to Dr. Triveni Widayanti SHMH as the moderator and to Professor Dr. Harlida Abdul Wahab for delivering highly beneficial insights today. Thank you, Prof. And now we will process with the virtual virtual presentation of the certificate of appreciation. Uh, now that concludes today guest lecture on behalf of the organizing, we extend our gratitude to the speaker and all participants for dedicating their time to the listen and <coughs> engage with the available content search by our speakers. Thank you very much. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank you so much also uh, for UNHAS yeah, for having uh, right? Yes, thank you Prof. So I may leave now? Or? <laughs> yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Yes, Professor. Thank you so much. Thank you so much again. Thank you Prof. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Prof. Thank